What's going on everyone? Dark Side Phil here. Sorry, I'm checking the date. I actually had no idea what today was. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Um, yeah. And, uh, I'm here to do another unexpected video. And this video is going to have absolutely nothing to do with gaming, nothing to do with, you know, the usual. Um, it's more of a personal video just because something has happened today that really upsets me. I'm kind of a ball of emotions today. Um, I don't really know how to feel or or even how to react. Um, and so I just, I, I like to take the opportunity to when this kind of stuff happens to, to kind of vent a little bit, but also to talk to everyone because I think it's really important for people to know what's going on, not only in my life personally, but just in general with America. Um, and some of the stuff that's that's been going down. And so what I'd like to talk about today is something that happened this morning. Um, as you know, and this is a major part of my story, and I almost feel like my saga uh, of my success, or my current, I should, guess I should say current success, because as you know, things do tend to change uh, and can change at a moment's notice. But, um... Uh, uh. At least that hasn't changed, right? I still belch every video I make. But uh, it was at this very spot that I sat on, I believe it was September 31st of 2010. Um, although it could have been October 1st. I'm not 100% on the exact date. But this very spot that I sat when I came home uh, that day and I announced to everyone that I had actually been laid off uh, from my full-time job of almost five full straight years uh, and that I really had no idea what I was going to do with my life. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to find another job, another office job, if I was going to be able to uh, have to change, maybe change jobs, which would have been pretty hard for me, especially with my back injury. I can't do a lot of things that other people do, like like any kind of a, a service job, like working at a store, retail, selling stuff. I can't do that because I can't stand up. Or, you know, food services, that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, in Connecticut, in the job sector I was working in, there's absolutely nothing available. In fact, even to this day, this is 1.75, I guess one and three quarter years later, it's worse than it was when I got laid off, and I'm not joking. It's actually worse here in Connecticut than ever, and the economy is just tanking. There's no jobs out there. The only jobs are literally like fast food, to which you say, how the fuck can you raise a family? How can you have a future? How can you support, if you have a medical condition, you need health insurance. How can you support yourself on a fast food job of minimum wage, okay? You, the answer is you can't. It's a fucking, it's, it's a smoke screen by the media in, the, in America trying to say, oh, things are starting to get better, and no, they're not. They're worse than ever. The economy has not turned. The reason the media is saying this kind of stuff is because they know that if they told the truth, that unemployment is still really fucking high. It's actually higher than ever. That people can't get jobs. That people are working two, three, sometimes four fucking jobs. Shitty hours a week making no money just to make ends meet. They know if the truth was out there that people would flip out and you'd have fucking riots in the streets. So they're basically trying to fluff over the truth so that people don't freak out, okay? But I digress. It was this point, this very spot, this point, one point, you know, one and three quarter years ago that I announced that I had gotten laid off. And since then, we've been through our trials and tribulations, our ups and downs, you know, being through YouTube and then getting kicked out of the YouTube partnership program, then going to Blip TV, getting kicked off of there, and then finally finding my home under the Machinima partnership umbrella. And now for the past year to year and a half feeling kind of secure in what I'm doing and happy with what I'm doing, making really good money and having no complaints, to be completely honest. You know, I'm one of those people where uh, my life has been so changed through this whole YouTube experience that it would be shame on me to sit here and complain about my back and how this and that. Because sure, there are things in my life that aren't perfect. There are things in my life that suck. But I'm not going to sit here and complain because I'm so much better off than so many people. And trust me, I know that. And that's why I'm not one of these people who I feel like I'm better than anyone or I'm, 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 I'm a higher level than anyone. And I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to feel like that because that's not the kind of person I am. You know, I started at the bottom. I worked my way through shitty job after shitty job. 
I worked my way through the shitty economy to finally get to this point where all of a sudden I lucked out and managed to be successful on YouTube. And I'm extremely grateful, not only for Machinima, obviously, for making it possible, but for you, the viewer, the fan, the common person who supports me in what I did. And I really feel that's why I'm so successful at what I do is because we have this arrangement, you know what I mean? I'm going to be honest and I'm going to stay true to myself and you guys continue to support me in that. Um, so all this being said, you're probably at this point like, what the fuck is he talking about? He's been rambling on for several minutes and hasn't even told us what the hell happened. So I was asleep. Um, you know, traditionally I end up staying up late every day. Uh, you know, people ask me what I do every day on my daily schedule. Usually I end up waking up late and staying up late. Recording, supervising uploads, sometimes talking to my girlfriend, etc. So I was up late, I, I was still sleeping. About quarter of 11 this morning, I got a phone call from my dad, and uh, it wasn't a good one. Let's put it this way. Now, for those of you who want a little bit of background, I rarely talk about my parents, um, simply because really. Not that they, they've never had a desire to be involved in my videos. Let's put it that way. It's not like you know they're they're very happy for me that I'm being success that I'm successful on YouTube. They support me fully, um, but it's not like they're the kind of people that say, "Oh, you're you're popular on YouTube. Let me get in on that." You know what I mean? Um, they do their own thing. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my dad. Okay, um, my dad uh, has busted his ass for his entire life. Uh, he started from the bottom, much like me, only he had a much rougher time. He never, all of a sudden at 30, made it big. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't, oh, I'm successful. For him, you know, he's always been a hard worker. And he started at this company that he's he's worked at for 35 years now. Um, back way, 35 years ago, think about that, before I was born, okay? And, uh, you know, he started at the bottom. This is a, it's the same company that I had worked for. Uh, I had mentioned now this was a helicopter company. I worked for the aftermarket support. He actually worked for the actual company that makes the helicopters brand new. So he worked in what was called the blade shop, where he would work with hazardous chemicals, dangerous things, and he would actually manufacture helicopter blades. And he did that for quite a long time. Eventually he got promoted to like foreman and lead man, uh, so semi-management. Um, and he kind of got screwed. He did. At his job, he was always held down by the upper management, where there were certain people who felt that he was really ready to go to that next level, and there were other people who just held him down, okay? And he did that for quite a long time. I'd say he probably did that for about 20 to maybe even 25 years. Uh, and mostly he suffered through it. Not that he hated the job so much, but he just didn't enjoy it. It wasn't something that, you know, oh, my whole life I just wanted to make helicopter plays. No. But for him, it was a job. It was a job that he would go in, he would put in the hours. Sometimes he actually had to work the night shift, which, just keep in mind, think about how this doesn't get to see me that much. Basically, what would happen is he would sleep all day. I would get home from school. He would wake up, play game, play, actually play video games with me for like an hour or so, eat dinner, and he would be out the door to go to work. So unlike most dads who were coming home at night and get to spend time with their family, he was out the door to work at night. Uh, cause just because he had to. That's what he had to do to make ends meet. And he was getting paid enough to support the family working the night shift. And uh, he did this for a very long time. Um, to basically get me through school, to get me through college, because he was working this job, he was able to do things like put me through private school, put me into a private college that otherwise wouldn't have happened. Okay, uh, And I'm extremely, great, extremely grateful to him for doing that for me. And... Uh, and there were sacrifices, too. A lot of times when he had to work longer hours, when he wasn't able to be there with the family, we weren't able to do as many things as a family might like to do growing up. Now, I am perfectly aware that this is actually pretty much common at this point, okay? The economy is in such shambles right now that most people... Uh, I think there's, it's, there's, there's a statistic that came out today that like only 29% of, of families are able to have a, a stay-at-home parent, okay? My mom was a stay-at-home parent. My mom actually decided that she was going to stay home and raise me full time. And that was a big decision too because my dad had to bust his ass at work to basically support the entire family while my mom was at home raising me. And I think obviously as you can see, the fact that I'm intelligent, the fact that I'm well spoken, the fact that I'm uh, responsible, the fact that I'm disciplined, a lot of these things came out of the fact that my mom was a stay at home parent. And I am extremely grateful to her for doing that. Um, 
That being said, you know, my dad worked at this blade shop or whatever for about 20 to 25 years, and then he decided he had enough of the bullshit. He finally reached the peak where he knew there was a glass ceiling, and he was never going to break through it because of this bureaucracy of where he worked. So he decided he was going to transfer out of this blade shop, and he was going to work for a different division of the same company that did aftermarket support. This is the same division of the company that I worked for for almost five years. And since he's worked there, he's worked under a ridiculous amount of different people. Oh yeah, you know, we're going to support, we're going to bring you up to here, we're going to use you to do this, we're going to use you to do that. He's literally gone through hundreds of thousands of dollars of training to learn how to do continuous improvement. And what continuous improvement is, it's basically if your business isn't efficient enough, or if in the, especially in this kind of economy, things aren't running as well. You, you realize that you're not as efficient. You're spending too much money here, spending too much time doing something here. Continuous improvement analyzes your business from start to finish, all the processes that are in your business, and basically maps them out and tries to figure out how can we make them better. Can we cut this part out or put this part over here? Or can we do this, consolidate this? Where's the waste in your process so that basically your company is more efficient and doesn't bleed money? So they spent ridiculous amounts of time and money training him in this. And this is what he's done for the past 10 or so years. You know, some of which before I worked there, some of which during when I worked there, and now for the past almost two years after I got laid off. Well, the bottom line is this. And this is why I say it's all smoke and mirrors when it comes to the mainstream media. Things are going horribly in Connecticut, okay? Jobs are, are gone. If you don't have a job now, you're pretty fucked. I'm going to be honest, you're fucked. There's nothing out there. The only jobs that are opening in Connecticut, again, these line-level, service, fast food, you know, jobs, minimum wage, there's nothing available out there for someone who is qualified, who has significant training, okay? Um, and because of this, the, this actual company that makes helicopters and actually supports the helicopters... They're horrible. Their management in the past decade, pathetic, okay? They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They actually, it, when I was working there, when I first started working there, so we're talking from 2006, 2007, they were having meetings saying, our company, in a bad economy, our company's doing great. So this year we're offering everyone a bonus, and we're giving everyone a raise, and we're expanding, and we're opening up all these new opportunities. Within three years of them making those announcements, they pissed away all their money, the whole industry got turned on its head. They stopped selling new helicopters and had absolutely no backup plan on what to do because no one could afford to buy new helicopters. And because of that, ever since then, starting with when I got laid off, they've continuously been laying off people year after year after year, several times a year, and it's a complete mess. In fact, to the point where it's actually looking like that company, that aftermarket support helicopter company that I worked for, is going to close completely and they're probably going to outsource that to some foreign company because it's cheaper, okay? It's pathetic, it's disgusting, it's the opposite of the American way, but this is what corporate America is doing to try to survive in this economy. So all this being said, I know it's a lot of buildup, I wanted to give you some background. My dad called me about quarter of 11 this morning and basically told me, Phil, I got laid off. And uh, it's, it's an alarming upsetting situation for them, for me, when I say them, my parents, obviously, for me, for many different reasons. Um, the first reason being that this company fucking completely screws everyone that they lay off. They gave me a shitty severance package. They gave my dad a shitty severance package. They basically said, here's not even one year's salary for your severance and 35 weeks of medical, okay? because he's worked there for 35 years. If he didn't work there for 35 years, he would have had way less. So, he's got 35 weeks of paid medical, and then, after that runs out, if he hasn't already found another job that has a medical plan that covers him, by law, just like what happened to me when I got laid off, this company is required to do what's called COBRA coverage, which means for a year and a half after the 35 uh, weeks run out, excuse me, they're actually required to continuously cover him under their medical plan, but he has to pay for it out of his own pocket. So it used to be covered under his wages, they would just take it out of his wages, he now has to pay for it out of pocket. This is the primary concern right now, and the primary concern is because my mom, my mom unfortunately has a lot of medical problems, you know, she's got, she actually has the same back problem that I have, 
only she went and had the surgery, the spinal fusion surgery, which actually, from what she's told me, made her worse. She's in more pain than ever, she's less mobile, and that's why, honestly, I'm so terrified to have the surgery because it's very hit or miss. There are people who have this surgery and end up worse off than they were before it. She's one of these cases, and being that I'm directly related to her, I'm thinking, gee, maybe there's something genetic. Maybe there's a high chance that if I get the surgery that I will be in the same situation. So she's in constant pain. She's constantly going to get injections in her back. She's got a metal plate in her back. She's got other medical issues going on. I'm not going to obviously go into full detail, but, you know, she's up there in age. She's, she's uh, you know, getting on 60, and this is the age where shit creeps up. And this is the age where you really need to have solid medical and stuff that you can depend on. And all of a sudden, after 35 weeks, and then, of course, there's the COBRA coverage that they're going to have to pay for, which I'm sure is going to be absolutely ridiculously expensive because she has pre-existing conditions, they're going to be in trouble, Okay. Now, my parents aren't people who throw away all their money and spend it all, but at the same time, recently they've done certain things. They've had, they kind of did some renovations to the house because their house has been kind of falling apart. They haven't done anything to it for like 20 years, so they did some internal renovations and such. So they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a giant nest egg that they're sitting on or anything like that. Um, you know, my dad's 50... 50 He's in his mid-50s, and I know that's horrible. I don't know if he's 55 or 56. I feel bad about that, but... He's up there in age, and let's be completely honest, in an economy where there's no jobs, no one's really hiring, everyone is overqualified. The people who have the most training basically can't get jobs because people are looking for people who aren't looking for as much money. Um, who's going to be looking for a 55-year-old, 50, per se, uh, to hire? They're not. They're looking for new, fresh talent who they could get in at an entry-level salary and take advantage of their skills and mold and build them to be a company man, not someone who's coming in this late in the game. So there's a major concern that my dad might not be able to find a job relatively soon. And unfortunately, not like me, you know, he hasn't been doing YouTube stuff, he doesn't have any hobbies on the side that he's been focusing on that could be fall back upon to see if, you know, it's going to be something successful. So it's really alarming, it's really concerning. Um, the good news is, a couple things. First of all, my parents are in a good financial position in regards to debt. For example, they've put me through college and it's fully paid for. There's no more debt there. Um, the house is completely paid off. They don't have any mortgage anymore. That's a positive. So it's not like they have these massive loans and debts and credit card debts or anything like that that they're worried about. That's not the concern. In fact, my dad even said, he says, listen, I could take a major cut in pay. You know, I could probably work for, you know, a significantly less than what I was getting paid at this job. And it's not a big deal. I'll just realize I can't spend on stuff, you know, frivolously or anything like that. I have to really make a solid budget and, and kind of ration myself off. So the good news is there's no massive debt there. The other thing is, and this is kind of like a shot in the dark, but... My aunt, who's my dad's sister, actually, her family owns a car dealership. And trust me, not to say that that's some godsend because the economy's bad. They're not selling as many cars as they usually do. But my dad even said, when I got laid off a year and a half ago, listen, if things really get bad, call your aunt because she might be able to get you a job there. Not that it's going to work out too well because you're back and how you're going to stand on the car lot all day with your back selling cars, but being that as it is, you might still be able to get a job there. And so what my dad's really looking at is if worse comes to worse and he really, after a while of looking and searching at what his options are and he can't find a job, he'll probably go to his sister and see if maybe there's something that can happen there. At least so that maybe he can be working a job where he can get medical coverage and, you know, my mom will be okay in that regard. So those are kind of positives. Um, the reason that I'm really concerned is a couple reasons. Number one is because I know my parents, and my parents are the kind of people where they see that now that for the past year and a half I've been successful, um, that I am happy, let's face it. I'm here, I'm doing well, I'm making good money, I'm successful with what I'm doing. People love my stuff that I put out, and I have a big following. I have a beautiful girlfriend. Uh, Despite the fact that I burp nonstop and that I have a back injury, my health for the most part isn't bad, you know what I mean? 
So they're happy for me, and they kind of see that, okay, we did a good job of raising him, we did a good job of supporting him when he needed us, so he's off doing his own thing and he's going to have a good life. I know they're the kind of people that if they need financial help or any kind of help, they're probably not going to ask me for it. And in fact, they're probably not even going to tell me. You know what I mean? They're the kind of people that they're proud. They've earned where they are. And they're not going to come begging for someone for help unless they absolutely positively need it and they're on their last legs. And even then I'm wondering if they would. So I know, unfortunately, that if I were to call, and in six months if I were to call my dad and say, Dad, you need help and he really needed it, he would say no or he would just not you know, tell me what's really going on. So unfortunately, I'm kind of like shut out from that part of what's going on. And I am concerned that over the next couple of years, keep in mind, they have, like I said, they have about two years where they're going to get medical coverage. Of course, they're going to have to pay for it that last year and a half. It's going to be expensive. But they have about two years where they're going to be okay um, with the medical before they have to kind of flip out and worry about it. And I really am concerned. I'm, I'm very worried, uh, as I think anyone would be, when you have close family, especially your parents who... My dad busted his fucking ass at this job for 35 years. Just think about that. 35 years you've been somewhere. And the company is falling apart because of bad management. They had money and they completely mismanaged it, lost it all, had no backup plan, and are now just continuously dropping people until basically the company looks like it might even close. Like, what the fuck? He invested his life in this company, and the company just basically discarded him like a piece of garbage. And basically, when my dad called me, I talked to him for about 45 minutes. And I tried to, 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 to cheer him up a little bit and said, well, listen, first of all, you've been struggling at this company for 35 years. They never gave you your due. How many years were you held back by management at this company and juggled around by management at this company and mismanaged by everyone at this company? And look at this as your silver lining. You're finally done with the bullshit. You're done with them. As of right now, you never need to think about another thing inside that building again. You're done with that industry, the helicopter business. You're done. You don't have to worry about any of those people or see them ever again. You're cut off from them. And that's a positive because you, you don't have to focus on the negativity. Gee, should I have done this right? What did I do wrong here? What did I do wrong there? You didn't do anything wrong. It's the fucking company, the management sucks, and the economy in general in America sucks. That's the problem. Um, so I tried to cheer him up and said, listen, you know, when I, and I know this doesn't, it, obviously I'm trying to pep talk my dad. I don't know how much this really helped him. But I said, when I lost my job, I took all that energy that I had, and I could have done two things. I could have been destructive, and I could have been constructive. I could have been destructive, and I could have picked stuff up and threw it, and I could have punched fucking walls, and I could have went and slit the people's tires who were the management at the company, and I could have made ranting videos on YouTube about how the company sucks my fucking balls, and they're assholes, and fuck this guy, and fuck that guy, and I could have been just angry and upset and depressed about everything and been destructive. Or take all that energy and focus it somewhere else that could possibly be constructed. And that's what I did. I focused on putting out videos on YouTube, on making new video series, on doing this full time and making this work, and it paid off. Now, keep in mind, like I said, my dad doesn't have this kind of hobby or thing to fall back on. I understand that. But I tried to make him understand the, 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 the value of positivity and being constructive in the face of adversity. Um, and I just talked it out with him for like 45 minutes, and I think that I did hopefully make him feel a little bit better about it, even though there's really nothing I can do. Um, so yeah, so I'm very upset, and you know, understandably, obviously that's why I seem kind of down in this video. I mean, again, this, I feel, I kind of feel, and I hate to say it, I kind of feel exactly the same way I felt one and a quarter, one and three quarter years ago when I lost my job, where... I'm lost. I don't know what the future is going to hold. At least for me right now, the immediate future is looking great. But when you have loved ones that stuff like this happens to, it really affects you. And I don't know what to do. There's nothing I know I can do in my power to really help them. Um, my dad's unsure what his next steps are going to be. I think he, he says he's looking for an unemployment lawyer to talk to, just like I talked to one, to look at his severance package to make sure he fully understands what it is. To honestly see if he has a case against this company after working there for 35 years and getting laid off the way that he did. I don't know. Obviously, I'm an outsider. I don't know the full circumstances around it. 
So I don't know if he would have a case or anything like that against these guys, or what even the benefits would be to try to go against this company and sue them. But I think that's his next step, and then just kind of seeing what the hell he's going to do next, because I don't think he had a backup plan per se. I didn't have a backup plan either. Let's face it. You know, the difference here is that he kind of saw this coming. It was kind of like. I, and my dad actually said this. He says, imagine if, and it's a, it's, it's a very sad analogy, so please forgive me if this has personal connection to anyone, but imagine that you see something that has cancer, whether it's a person or a pet or something, and you know eventually, uh, you know, it's, go, it's, it's on its last legs. It's going to go, but you're just like, all right, I'm just going to keep going, pushing through every day until we see what happens, and then finally it passes away. Well, it's kind of the same thing with this. He knew this company was killing itself from the inside. The management didn't know what the fuck they were doing, and they just pissed away money, destroyed the, the, the economic prosperity that they had, and now when the economy turns, they're really double fucked. And so he knew that it was not going to last. He pretty much told me, I knew this company was not going to last. I knew that my time was coming eventually, and everyone's time at that company is coming. So he saw it coming a little bit which is different from me. I was completely blindsided when I got laid off. So it was a little bit different there. Um, but on the flip side of that, he's a lot older than I am. Like I said, again, when you're in a, in a hiring, uh, looking for people to hire, you're not looking for people of his age. And it's really a concern for me that what is he going to do? I really do feel just as upset right now as I did when I lost my job because I don't know what I can do. If I can do anything, all I can say is I'm going to try to be... Oops, sounds like I got a package... Sorry about that. I had a, an actual delivery at the door and uh, he kept knocking, so I had to stop the video. Uh, but just to kind of summarize this and, and, and wrap it up, I do. I feel just as upset as I am when I lost my own job. The difference being that, unfortunately, I'm not really in control this time. Back then it was like, okay, I'm the master of my own destiny. I don't have a boss. It's time for me to focus on what I want to do and make it work and make it happen. And Part hard work, but also part complete luck, I was able to make it happen. But I was uh, belching, uh, but I was also younger, you know what I mean? I was half the age of my dad, and it's a completely different situation. Um, you know, our life situations, where I was young and I was like, you know, I'm not even worried about health insurance or nothing, let's just make this happen. It was a big gamble what I did, but it paid off. I don't know if my dad could afford to do stuff like that. Um, so I'm really worried. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I know I say that a lot. People say that's like my catchphrase. You know, when things happen, sometimes you just have to accept them. And at this point, we kind of knew this was coming. We knew that this company is going under. Um, and unfortunately, as I said, people, oh, Phil doesn't know what he's talking about. The economy's fine. You, you don't know what you're talking about, okay? Just because maybe you're in some one sector that right now is booming doesn't mean that the rest of everyone else out there isn't suffering. The economy in America fucking blows. There's nothing positive going on out there right now. The only things that are booming are these basically job sectors that are completely different than the standard. All the old jobs, the office jobs, the 9 to 5 jobs, they're gone. They're going away. They're being outsourced to China, to India, to these places where they're going to accept $4 a day as a payment. If, actually, in a lot of countries, it's a lot less. And uh, and really, all that work is, is leaving. It's really only these emerging things, such as YouTube, the Internet. These are the kind of industries that are booming. And that's why when you see legislation like SOPA, like PIPA, that wants to stifle the one thing in America that's actually doing well because of regulation, because old school corporate America isn't doing so well and they're like oh no where's the money we need to stop everyone else from making money because we're not making money that's so alarming um, it really is bad out there uh, it, especially in my like I said my job sector there's nothing if I were to go look for another job and the thing that I was doing there's nothing available people are completely having to change their lives and flip their lives and do completely different things because of this, and it's alarming because, like, for example, I went to school for business. That's pretty much useless now. Like, all that stuff, all the training, all the stuff that I learned was applicable to an economy that was making money and that was being successful. The economy is so bad right now that those job skills really aren't even needed anymore. I'm considered overqualified for most of the jobs that are out there that are available. You know, like I said, because most of the jobs out there are not 
jobs where you're going to make any kind of decent money and you can support yourself and have a place and do anything. So, you know, all I can say is this. I'm going to have to, again, I'm going to adhere to the same tenets and the same philosophies that I adhered to when I lost my job. I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to do everything I can that if my parents need help, I'm going to be there for them. Um, I'm going to try to be, you know, emotional support, moral support as much as I can. I don't really know realistically what I can do to help my dad job-wise, you know what I mean? Um, I don't really think I can do anything because I'm completely out of any of that stuff that I used to do. And everything, as you know, doing stuff, videos on YouTube and being creative on YouTube, completely different than the old stuff I used to do. And so I don't have contacts or anything that I can help my dad out with, but it is what it is. You got to accept it. You got to move on and be constructive. And I hope that my dad and my mom are obviously able to do that. Um, you know, uh, being that it's this stage in the game, and it's like maybe the, I saw I, the, the, what I left them with was this. I said you got to look at it this way. For 35 years of your life, you struggled. You fought against adversity. You were able to get me through school. Look at me now. I'm doing really well. You were able to pay off your house. You were able to do a lot of positive things with what you suffered through. Think of this as another chapter of your life. This chapter of your life is now for you. It's for you to actually sit down and say, okay, it's time for me to evaluate myself and say, what do I really want to do with the rest of my life? And stop worrying about, I have to support this one and I have to worry about helping out this one and this and that. And just fucking, for him and my mom to finally just say, this is our time, okay? And it does stink because they were so close. If he had just worked there for a couple more years, he could have retired. But they decided to do this before he was at his retirement age, of course, to fucking screw him over, of course. And uh, and so that's another negative thing that I want to stop focusing on the negatives. Um, I'm upset, obviously, so I apologize, but I felt like I should share this with everyone. Um, just as something that, you know, that happens. And, you know, this whole YouTube experience for me, it's not... I hope this, this kind of... For those that, that like to talk shit, oh, Phil just does this for the money. No, I don't. I, you know, this video is from the heart. It's not about video games. Uh, if five people see this video, that's, you know what I mean? That's enough. I don't care about views or anything. I just, I, I really feel that this is therapeutic for me to be able to talk to you guys about this, but also to let you know what's going on with America right now and how bad it really is. People who have worked their entire lives dedicated to companies are getting laid off and thrown out into the fucking street because these companies mismanaged themselves during the time of prosperity and never planned for a bad economy. And now that the bad economy is here, they don't know what to do. Rather than, oh, let's restructure, let's do this. Instead, they're saying, well, we're fucked, lay everyone off, and we're going to go outsource everything. And, of course, by the way, it's not the guys at the top of the company that are getting laid off. Of course not. They're sitting on their nice, long, big bonuses. They're bouncing on their nest eggs like this. They're on their fucking yachts on the weekend drinking fucking champagne luncheons. And they're fine because, you know, they're the top. They earned it, right? You know, they definitely deserve to be up there while they lay off everyone else at the bottom because, you know, they're better than everyone else. So that's the situation in America right now. I hope and I pray that things get better for my parents, that things turn out for the better. Obviously, I'll keep you everyone updated if things do end up getting better and my dad finds a cool job or something works out and they, they flip this into something cool, I'll definitely let everyone know. Um, but I just felt like I really wanted to make this video just to talk a little bit about it, to keep everyone in the know on what's going on. Uh, uh, here in America, and I'm sure abroad, because I've heard some kind of other economies around the world are also just as bad, if not worse, than America's. So, that's it. All I can say is this. You got to stay positive and you got to stay constructive. I've adhered to that policy. I'm going to try to support my parents in that way and we're going to see what happens. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Just like with me, things work out for the better and, uh, and we can get through this. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for bearing with me. You finally learned a little bit about my parents, which I rarely talk about, which I know a lot of people will probably find pretty interesting. And, uh, that's it for now. This is Dark Side Phil kind of signing off. I'm still going to do all the stuff I was normally planning to do today. So don't be worried that, uh-oh, because this happened, that Phil's, you know, uh-oh, you know. i got to push ahead. That's the thing all about me. It's about positivity and being constructive. 
yeah, this sucks, but I know there's really nothing I can do, so it's time to push ahead and be positive and just keep on trucking and doing what I'm doing. So you're still going to see <clears throat> the 25th anniversary episode. It's the 25th episode of Ask the King later today. You're still going to see um, the conclusion of Spec Ops The Line. But I wanted to get this video to get this off my chest, so now I can move on and get on with the, the normal daily stuff. So thanks a lot for listening. I appreciate it that people tune in to listen to this personal stuff. And uh, I will see you later, okay? Thanks a lot, everyone.